Hi, welcome to our first lab demonstration video for our 1211 lab here in North Georgia. Uh, this is going to be the first of probably just a few that we'll see the rest of the semester demonstrating kind of what, we, what we're missing out on kind of the face-to-face -face meetings of our labs. Um, on the bright side of things, we only, only have kind of one more wet lab experiment after this one. We're going to be doing an experiment uh, that I'll have a video to kind of demonstrate the general procedure for that one. The rest of ours, like the next couple weeks, will be Lewis dot structure things that I will basically just have some videos doing some additional examples for those. Uh, but for this week, we're going to give kind of a, a quick demonstration of where the data that you actually have for your hydrogen line spectrum experiment, where it kind of comes from. So it'll be pretty short, hopefully just a few minutes here. Uh, but basically, what I'm going to run through is if you look in your CSE pub page, like the questions printout section, uh, you should see a couple tables of data. And those tables of data should have like wavelengths and scale ratings, or at least the helium line spectrum. And then you'll see like a hydrogen line spectrum that should have a table that has just scale ratings. Uh, and our goal, or really what I want to show in this video, is just figure out where is that, where are those numbers coming from, or how are those numbers generated. Uh, and it might not be exactly where the specific numbers you see in that table are coming from, but it's kind of the same general idea or technique as far as how they were measured. So. What we're doing for this particular experiment, we're basically just taking a look at an atomic line spectrum. What I have up here is an atomic line spectrum for helium. Hopefully it's showing up enough with the, the light to be able to be able to make out some of the lines. You don't have to make out every single one, that's okay. <clears throat> and what we're really gonna try to do is basically just measure where are these different lines. And we can do that just with, in this case, a meter stick. Um, if you didn't have a large projector screen like this, you could actually do it just on a piece of paper with a small ruler. All of your ratios should still be the same. That's the nice thing about doing what we call these scale readings. As long as you do kind of something that's very consistent for all the measurements that you make, it doesn't really matter on what scale you do them. You can, you can make your measurements in different units. You can do centimeters or millimeters or meters uh, or even inches. Uh, it doesn't really make much of a difference. And so to really just quickly kind of show what, what's going on with these then, I'm just gonna pick kind of a, a general starting point where really kind of the edge of the slide is and what, what I'm seeing for these images that we're looking at. And what we're going to do is basically, from my starting point of my scale reading, I'm going to go through and just look at where are the center points of the different lines for this particular spectrum. And from the center of those lines, I can make a mark, make a measurement. This particular one looks like it's just past about, I have on the inches side of this meter stick, so I could say 16 and a half inches. And that would be my scale reading for this line. If all the rest of these are also lines, I get a line here and here, I can actually just measure out what are these lengths in inches from my starting point, and I would do that for every single line. If my meter stick runs out, I can just make a mark, restart it kind of in that same spot here, going across, and still get scale readings for all of my other measurements. Now, if I want it to be really, really accurate and really precise, I need to make sure that my meter stick's staying perfectly level, my starting ending points are being kept track of very efficiently. Uh, but then the goal is, I do all this for the helium line spectrum, and in that table you have on CSC Pub, you're already going to have the wavelengths for each of those scale readings for what they should correspond to. And then what you do is now we can take a look at another line spectrum that we don't know the wavelengths of these lines, but if we use the same process, we can go through and again generate a scale reading for each of those, the four main lines that we see for this spectrum. And now we can use those scale readings to try and predict what we think these wavelengths should be. And that's really kind of the goal of this whole experiment. Um, and so those tables of data pretty much already have all of the measurements that you really need. Like I said, it's gonna be a, a very, very quick demonstration video. I don't think there's more that's really needed for kind of showing where that data came from. Uh, but once you have all of that data and kind of understand what it means, use the first table for all of your helium line spectrum, generate the calibration curve the way the pre-lab video kind of outlines. And then from that calibration curve, now you can figure out the wavelengths for these hydrogen lines, and we can correlate that back to the energy transitions, like what basically energy levels your electron has to move between for a hydrogen atom to get these particular lines to show up, or these particular photons or colors of light to be emitted from those hydrogen atoms. Um, so that's kind of the, the gist of how things work for this particular experiment. Um, for our future labs, like I said, we'll get, hopefully have videos, like I've sent out in the emails every about Friday or Saturday, I'll try to get those things up. The next couple weeks are based on Lewis structures or different things involved with Lewis structures and geometries. And so most of that will probably be videos of me just walking through additional examples. Some of this either on the whiteboard, uh, or maybe even talking to another PowerPoint, just kind of depending on what, what I'm gonna be able to kind of get in and actually do for recordings. Uh, but expect to see those kind of on a weekly basis. 
Uh, if anyone does have any other questions uh, about where any of the data comes from or how to find this data, please email myself, email your instructors. Uh, we'll be happy to help answer questions. I know this is going to be kind of a, a weird transition for all of us, uh, kind of moving these labs online. Uh, definitely kind of gives a bit of a different element and kind of feel to the, the whole process as we go through these. So please, if you're running into any problems or have questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Uh, we are here to help on it. And that's all I have for this time, and I will see you guys then next week.